Welcome back to another one of my vlogs. In this vlog, I'm gonna talk about Kotlin sealed classes and a couple of the ways that I like to use them, mainly pertaining to state management. Now, if you don't know what Kotlin sealed classes are, you literally have never used them before, never seen them before, don't worry about it. I'm gonna actually show you code samples as we go through this video. So my goal in this video isn't to show you technically speaking how Kotlin sealed classes work or how to use them. I want to either, A, if you've never seen them before, I, I wanna inspire you to go and, you know, research them because I think they're definitely worthwhile to take a look at or B if you have seen them before to give you some ideas of how you can use them in your projects. So if you've been following along with my vlogging series, you know that I've been working on a course with dynamic feature modules and clean architecture. So on the weekend I came in because I, I feel like I'm getting a little bit behind on this course. Uh, I guess because there's a lot of things that I haven't kind of used before. Obviously, I've never used dynamic feature modules before. It's a totally new thing, so there's not a ton of information on it. I've never used clean architecture before. Again, although it's not, it turns out it's not much different to how I was structuring code before. It is still different. And I also haven't used work manager before, and I was trying to use that. So a lot of things I haven't used before. So I started to feel kind of overwhelmed, and I came in over the weekend to get some extra stuff done. So I ended up having a very productive weekend, and I want to talk about some of the things that I worked on. So let's take a look at the app that I've been building. And again, Again, if you haven't watched my other vlogs, this app is going to be very foreign to you. You've never seen it before. But if you have been watching my vlogs, this is going to look very familiar. So let's take a look. So the first fragment that comes into view is this list of notes, this fragment that contains a list of notes. So if you've never seen this app before, it's pretty simple. It's just like a note taking application. It, there's a list of notes. If you click on the note, you can edit them, you can update them, delete them, create them, all that kind of stuff. The feature that I was implementing over the weekend was being able to select multiple notes inside of the list and also be able to delete them. So if I wanted to, for example, hold down long click on these notes, I should enter this kind of I guess, selection mode where the toolbar changes to have an X up here, a trash can. And then if I click any notes that have not been selected yet, they get highlighted. If I click on one that has already been highlighted, it gets unhighlighted. This was the behavior that I was trying to implement. Now, if you've been around Android development for any amount of time, you know that typically this behavior is handled with gestures. So maybe inside of the view holder in your recycler view, you would set up an on touch listener. You would use a gesture detector. You pass the touch event to the gesture detector, and then you can detect any types of different gestures, whether they're like swipes, long clicks, whatever. Then you can determine, you know, if the user holds down their finger on the list item, then you would like enter some kind of selection mode and keep track of the list items that are selected. And there's actually something new that came out, I think this year or maybe in 2019, I didn't even know this thing existed. It's called Android X Recycler View Selection. And apparently it is a Recycler View add-on library for providing support for item selection. So I actually tried this thing out in my project because I thought, oh, this new thing, I might as well use it. But it turns out it doesn't really work well it works it works actually really good for just selecting items but if you have any kind of other behavior it's not that great and i'll tell you what i mean so i don't have it set up on my project right now but i'll just kind of outline generally what it did and then what the problems with that was so if i had it set up on this project i would be able to select items really easily it, it was actually worked really great for that it kind of lets you maintain like a list inside of the adapter and you could set the list items for active or not active inside of the view holder and it's it was actually like really easy to set up and everything worked really good so if i hold down long click it would set the view the view holder to active and then it would highlight it and if i clicked it again it would set it to not active it was actually really awesome the problem with this was it interfered with the other gestures so like for example in this project if i click out of this i can swipe to delete notes so if i was to just like swipe this one out it deletes that note but if i was using the selector it interfered with other gestures so like for example i did if if i'm in selector mode so if i have these notes selected i don't want to be able to swipe these notes out which you don't see in this app because that's how i built it but when you were using the selector that kind of logic was really difficult to write in there and that goes for all of the other kind of gestures also Basically, at the end of the day, it was really good for selecting things, but if you were doing anything else with your list, it added exponential layers of complexity. So at the end of the day, I ended up implementing a custom system with Kotlin sealed classes, and I'm very happy that it did because everything works really awesome, and it's uh, logically speaking, I think it's really easy to follow. So I wanna show you how it works. So first, let's go through the app, and I just wanna show you the, the behavior that is being implemented, and then we're gonna look at the code, and I'll kind of walk through it and show you how I did that. So at the end of the day, essentially want, what I want you to notice here is that there's, there's two states that can be, that this toolbar or this view can be in. It can either be in what 
I'm calling a search view state, which is what you see here. You have the search view up here. I could, you know, do a search, search some content. I could clear the search, whatever. Oh, I can also click a, a filter button up here and change the filters based on title or date, ascending or descending. Uh, and then there's also the other state, which is like this selection mode. So if I was to do a long click on one of these, then we enter that selection mode. I can click them, I can unhighlight them, I can delete them, all that kind of behavior. All right, so this is a multi-module project. So I'm going into the notes module, going into main, the main package directory, going into framework because we're gonna be looking at one of the views, going into the presentation layer, note list because that is the feature or the, uh, yeah, the feature that we're working on within the module, the note list. And I'm gonna go into the, the state package and I have a couple of classes in here. The first one I wanna show you is this note list toolbar state. So this is the sealed class that I was talking about that denotes the different states that the view can be in. So let me just bring the app on the screen again, just to remind you. So we have search view state, which kind of has this search view in the toolbar and then the, the filter options. And then if I was to click this and initiate uh, the highlighting, this is what I would call like the selection state. So I call this multi-selection state, which is up here. So these are the two kind of states that this view can be in. So for those of you who do know what sealed classes are and you're comfortable with them, you use them, this is gonna look very simple to you. You're gonna be like, great, this I understand completely. But for those of you who have never seen a Kotlin sealed class before, this is gonna be very confusing. So let me just quickly go to the Kotlin documentation and read a little bit about what Kotlin sealed classes are. Again, I don't wanna get into like technically speaking how they work, what you can use them for. I'm just trying to get you interested so that you will actually go out and do these things on your own. If you watch this video and you want to know more, you wanna see me go out and give you examples on Kotlin sealed classes and how to use them, leave a comment below and tell me that because if I get enough demand for any particular topic, inevitably I make a video on it. So let me know in the comments below. Okay, so here's the definition. I'm just gonna read a little, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, I'm just gonna read a bit. Sealed classes are used for representing restricted class hierarchies when a value can have one of these types from a limited set but cannot have any other type. They are in a sense an extension of an enum class. So this is a really good comparison, the extension of an enum class comparison. They are essentially enum classes with added features. And those of you who know what an enum is, it's essentially just a group of constants that are related. I think that's a good way to think of it. So a Kotlin seal class is a group of classes that are related. They kind of, they subclass one kind of parent class and they're all related, but they have some added features that enums don't have. Now let's go back to my code and take a look at the, the, the sealed class again. So we have, it's called note list toolbar state, and there's two classes within it. It's called multi-selection state and the search view state. I'll bring the, the app on the screen again here. So again, the, the search view state is when the toolbar is in this state. I, if I click on a note, I'm taken to the details. The multi-selection state is if I hold down long click, toolbar changes to this, and I have kind of different behavior that I can use inside of this view. The thing to notice here is that they both extend the parent class, so they extend the note list toolbar state. So you can think of them as, two different states that are related. Yeah, like a comparison of an enum. It's like two constants that are within the same group of constants. Okay, so now the question is, how am I managing this stuff in the view? Because sure, the sealed class looks fine, but how is that actually practically being used? So what I like to do when I use these Kotlin sealed classes to maintain some kind of state is generally I like to build like some kind of a manager class. And then inside of the manager class, I have a live data value that can be changed, which is uh, which holds that parent state and then I observe that in the UI. So if it changes to say the search view state, then I observe that change and I, and I change the UI accordingly. If it changes to the selection state, I observe that change and I change the UI accordingly. So let me show you what I mean by the manager. So here is the manager that I built for managing the states of the toolbar. I call it note list interaction manager. So it has two mutable live data, private mutable live data objects at the, at the top. One is selected notes, which is just a list of notes. And then the other one is the toolbar state. So here's that Kotlin seal class that I was talking about. Note list toolbar state. It's a live data value and it holds that note list toolbar state. So you you know there's two possible states here. We can either be the search view state or the multi-selection state. You can see that the initial value is the search view state. Then I just expose those live data objects to the UI through these two variables. So selected notes or the toolbar state. And then I observe that. So this note list interaction manager is kept in the view model. So if I was to open up the note list view model, you can see at the top I have note list interaction manager and it's exposing the state through this variable right here. So toolbar state, 
noteless interaction manager dot toolbar state. And then if you look in the UI, I'm observing that. So let's take a look at the UI just so you can actually see it. So I'm gonna open up note list fragment. If I scroll down to my subscribe, subscribe observers function. So let me go down. You can see view model toolbar state. There's the observer. And there's just a when statement that says when the toolbar state is either in multi selection state or search view state, it updates the UI accordingly with the corresponding functions. So that's all it does. So basically what I do in the UI is inside of the view holder, I'm listening for on long clicks. So when an on long click is detected, if I hold that down, it essentially changes the state in the view model, changes the toolbar state to the selection state, and then the UI just updates accordingly. If I was to click this X, I'm saying change to the search view state, and then the UI updates accordingly again. And just so you can actually see it, let's go into the note list adapter and I'll actually show you that. So if I scroll down here to note view holder, you can see that down here, I'm detecting on long clicks. And if there is an on long click, I'm saying activate multi selection mode with this interface that's being provided to the constructor. So if you scroll down, you can see a, a definition of that interface. It's just a bunch of functions. Activate multi selection mode is one of them. Now, if I go into the note list fragment, at the top, I am implementing that interface. So there's the interaction interface and I'm uh, detecting that function that I just mentioned. So again, the function is activate multi selection mode. Let me just copy that and search for that inside of note list fragment. And you can see here, activate multi selection mode calls view model set toolbar state to the multi selection mode. And then of course the observer would observe that change and update the UI accordingly. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is how I'm keeping track of the list items, the selected list items. So if I'm clicking on these or I'm highlighting them or not highlighting them, how is that being tracked? Now you could do this, like I said, with the recycle view selection thing, but I wasn't my favorite because it interfered with the other gestures. So let me show you how I did it because I think it's a really uh, kind of unique solution to this problem and it ended up working really good. So I'm kind of I'm kind of proud of it. I want to show it off. So if you go into my note list interaction manager, you can see that I have a mutable live data list of notes and it's being observed in the UI through this variable here. So this is saved in the view model like I showed you and then through the view model, the UI is observing that. So let's go into the note list adapter and I'll show you how I'm using this. So if you scroll up to the top, I have two kind of interesting values being passed to the constructor here. And you you might be like, hey, am I, are you supposed to do that? I'm passing a lifecycle owner and also a list of live data values. So you might have never seen this before. I've personally never done this before. This was the first time I ever passed like a lifecycle owner or a list of live data values into a recycler view adapter, but it worked out really good. So let me show you how I, I set this up. So these selected notes are the ones from the manager. So if I go into note list fragments and I look at my uh, setup recycler view function, if I scroll down here, you can see I have list adapter equals new note list adapter. I'm passing the view lifecycle owner of the fragment as the lifecycle owner. And then I'm passing the selected notes from the, the manager, the manager, the note list interaction manager class. And I'm passing that to the adapter. So I'm essentially feeding the live data from the manager into the adapter. Now let's go back to the adapter and see how it gets used. So if you scroll down to the view holder, again, we have the lifecycle owner being passed and that list of selected notes, the live data. Then if you look into the bind function, so the bind function is being called in on bind view holder. Every time a new view comes into view for the recycler view, bind is called and it sets everything. It sets the, you know, everything to do with the note. If you look at the app, you have like the title, you have the date, uh, and then in this case, it's setting the observers. So if you scroll down, there's that live data being observed. I'm passing the life cycle owner. Then there's just some simple logic down here that's saying if the list of notes that's being observed, the, the selected notes, contains the note that's being set to that particular view holder, then we want to change the background color to gray. So that's this right here. If it doesn't, then we're just setting it to white, which is this color primary. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm putting an observer inside of each view holder and it's observing the list of selected notes. So every time I click one, that note gets added to the list of selected notes. And then the view holder sees, says, oh, hey, look, the list of selected notes has changed. I wonder if the note that I'm holding is in that list. If it is, then it changes to gray. If it isn't, then it changes to white. That's how it works. And I was a little nervous about putting a list of live data inside of each view holder, but I inserted a thousand notes into my database just to see how it would work. And I, 
I scrolled all of them so that all of them were queried and everything was working good. There was no like lag. I selected random ones. I unselected them. I did a whole bunch of stuff. I played around with it, essentially tried to break it and everything worked really good. So it turned out really good. And there's, there's no risk of like having a random observer floating around that you forgot to like unsubscribe because I'm using the view lifecycle owner as the subscriber. So just to kind of reiterate what I did, if you look in note list fragment, I'm to the constructor of the adapter, I'm passing the view lifecycle owner of the fragment. So if the fragment was destroyed or goes out of view, the lifecycle owner is also destroyed. Therefore the observers inside of the view holders will unsubscribe. So there's no risk of memory leaks or having observers floating around in memory that you forget about. I guess since this is a vlog, I'll show you one last thing that I implemented in the app. I added the ability to uh, filter on the title or the date and then also do ascending or descending order. So if you take a look at the app, there's this icon in the top of the toolbar. If I click it, a dialogue comes into view. I can either filter by title or date or ascending or descending order. So if I do, you know, say date, descending, hit apply, you have the um, newest dates at the top. So these are the newest notes that were inserted. If I was to then change to ascending, it does the opposite. The oldest notes are at the top. Uh, then I could do title, of course, do apply. That would be um, alphabet. Let me see. What is it? Ascending. So alphabetical order. And then if you were to do descending, that would be uh, anti alphabetical order, if that's how you say that, which you see because you see the, the W at the top. That is everything that I have uh, implemented since we last talked in the previous vlog. Actually, one last thing before we go, if you've been following along with my vlogs, you know that I asked you to follow an issue on the Google tracker because dynamic feature modules couldn't run espresso tests by default, you would get an error that said no tests found if you tried to run one. And a lot of you followed the issue, which was awesome. Thank you very much. You know, most of you probably don't care, but let me show you the effect that those of you who actually watched the vlog and started the issue. So here's the issue. It has 116 people who have started. When I first made that vlog, I think there was like six. So well over a hundred people have started and I've been, I've been getting a lot of um, updates on this issue. So thank you very much. Also, if you've been following along, you know that down here or in my last vlog, I said that if you uh, install Android Studio 4 beta, that it should run UI tests. Well, I actually did install Android Studio 4 beta. I'll show you the version on my screen here right now. You can see I have Android Studio 4 beta 4 installed. Well, I tried to run UI tests and it still didn't work. It still said no tests found. So I, I posted an update on that issue today. So I'm still waiting to hear back. Hopefully they resolve this. I mean, they're definitely going to resolve it. It's, it's such a big issue that there's no question that they're going to resolve it. It's just a matter of time. Uh, but I want to say thank you for everybody who actually started that issue because you had an impact. They are looking at it, uh, I think, a lot more than they were looking at before. Now, of course, one last thing before you go. Do not forget to like the video. If you like these vlogs, if you like my videos, if you want to support my channel in any way that you can, please press the like button because it helps so much. YouTube does not recommend my videos to other developers unless they think that people like them. So please tell YouTube that, that you like my videos. You know, if you don't tell YouTube that you like my videos, this coding and flow guy is just gonna absolutely leave me in the dust. Take a look at his subscribers. He has 116,000 subscribers. Did you know that I was actually the one who influenced him to start a YouTube channel? And now he is almost doubling my subscribers. His videos get double the likes that mine do. Re please help me out. Otherwise, he's going to just leave me in the dust. And I don't know. I, I, might, I might have to quit. I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I should start a new business. I've always wanted to be a professional dog walker. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.